Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about what really matters. Are you truly aware of what's most important and does your daily life reflect what's essential to you? Do you know what your priorities are but get sidetracked? Are you living an inspired life or doing an unsatisfying rinse and repeat most of the time? Learn to focus on what really matters as we begin our month focused on welcoming 2021. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Woo woo! Did it, everyone. We survived the year that shall not be named. I know it was hard for many of us. Let's focus on going onward and upward. Welcome 2021. I'm excited. New year. Welcome if you are listening for the first time. My podcast is definitely about clutter, but it focuses more on life coaching. Clutter is the metaphor that I use for life. Whatever is going on the inside of your life is reflected on the outside. So if you've got clutter, then there is probably some inner clutter going on. It is less about organizing, although there are some previous episodes on it, and physical clutter, and we do actually this month, we'll have something on physical clutter. And it's more about intentional living, uncluttered living, so that you can create the life you desire and share your gifts with the world. If you have been listening or watching, thank you for joining me for another season. It's the eighth year. Cannot believe it. Special shout out to all of you who have reached out to me. If I receive an email, if I receive a comment, even if you're not happy, I always respond. If I don't respond, it's because I haven't seen it. I have to give out a special shout out. All your emails always mean everything and the YouTube I do I take them the heart and they really support me uh, shout out to Frank I received an email we had to put Athena down the day before the election unexpectedly it was terribly hard although I believe that she didn't want to see the craziness and she's like I'm getting out before it all goes down anyway he reached out to tell me about how much he enjoyed the podcast and sent me a picture reading my book on his Kindle. And all the books are on Kindle now, just so everyone knows. I have eBooks. I didn't do that at first because I thought, well, journal prompts. I said, oh, when I get more ISBNs, I'll do it. And someone said to me, hey, I'm losing my sight and I have a program that I can use so I can write. So I was like, wow, did not know that. So everything's now on eBooks. But I just want to say thank you to all of you that reached out. And again, if I don't respond. It's because I didn't see it, but that's this kind of thing. This is my way of giving back. It's my way. I know we don't always have money maybe to buy a book or to have a coaching session. And so it's a way to share my life, to support you in hopefully clearing your clutter. At the beginning of the year, I always make big announcements. I haven't decided yet how this will shake out. There is a good chance this might be the last year of the podcast. Now, I'm not going to leave you hanging. No, I wouldn't do that to you. This is the eighth year. We are leaving North Carolina in the spring and send us good vibes. We don't have a house yet. We've got to iron all that out. We are going back to West Virginia, where I came from. Having my mom sick, losing Athena was really difficult. It was a very stressful year. And so it's just about change. And I'm thinking about what do I want to do when I grow up? No, I'm kidding. But as you know, if you've listened, I've been taking, and I'm going to do an episode on it, plant medicine. I love it. I have a connection with the plants. And so I don't know how that's going to shake out. I'll finish the course end of March, early April. I'm going to retake it. Everything's online. It's so much information. I have to retake it an entire time. And When Athena was getting sick, I was starting to learn more about potentially things I could do with that, but she, we had to put her down so quickly that I didn't get to do that. So maybe something in Athena's honor. I don't know where I am. 
doing this podcast takes a lot of writing. I map out and I don't fully write out things. When I first started, I got the most lovely note from someone who said, you know, I can tell when you, when you're sitting there reading and then when you become spontaneous, it's a huge difference. And I was like, oh, thank you. And she was so kind. And I had written out everything because I didn't want to forget anything. And I want to make sure you guys had all the great information. But even when I just jot down ideas, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes creativity. And I have been super proud of myself being able to get out all the books that I've gotten to because I love those. They're all my babies and really passionate because I can say, hey, I'm an author. I have a couple books I've talked about a little bit uh, that are part of my healing process. And I also figured out when I was talking to the animal communicator, when I think I knew deep down that Athena was dying and I just didn't want to admit it. So anyway, she, she ended up the session about what was going on and about me. And she said, you're not grieving, you're angry. And what I realized is two of these books that I want to write, one is about my time during cult like as I like to call it, and working with this coach and in old episodes, I, I mention her all the time. And until I left that and was able to step back, I'm like, you allowed someone to influence you too much. And I can say with certainty that is, I see that more often than not. So what is it that makes us just forget everything and, and listen to someone or give our power away? And that's one. And then from my really awful year as part of my healing process. So I'd written drafts of both of those, but really just kind of one was in anger, one was in sadness. And that's not an effective book, right? Because if I'm coming from anger, that doesn't do anything. And I'll admit, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get revenge for everything you did to me was probably the starting point. I don't feel that way anymore. I had to get that out. And, and you, when you read the book, hopefully you will, you understand why I felt that way and what was done to me. And I had been trying to achieve something, which the second book will be about. And then someone's, oh, after I spent all this time and money, oh yeah, you never wanted that. That was never going to happen. Well, you know, you could have told me that instead of having me work with you for four years. So I give you this long winded ramble because it's part of my healing process. So I just don't know about the podcast. I just don't know how long it'll last. This is the 368th episode. I will keep it up for free. I'm not going to, everyone's like, you need to move to Patreon and charge people. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to leave you hanging. So I don't know. I'll keep you posted. What I've always said is like when I read Eat, Pray, Love every year, or every other year, I always pick up something that I missed the first time. So these podcasts are going to be around. It's my hope that you listen to them more than once because you might've missed something. And you might need to hear something you weren't ready to then, but are now. I've got your back though. I've got you covered. We'll have them sure at least 400 episodes. That's one a day. And I don't think you can do more than that. Oh, if you can, that's awesome. But I've got you covered. So let you know what happens as I decide. Again, I'm loosely planned everything and I'm working on being more present. But what's important to me is to be able to do my own healing. And if we'll just have to see if I balance it out. Now on this podcast, I share myself and my thoughts. I'm a certified life coach. I was have training in rape crisis counseling. I work with people. I do a lot of personal growth and I spend my priority trying to be the best woman that I can be. These are my opinions and thoughts. Please think critically for yourself. Now, in numerous podcasts, I've said you know, if you need extra support, please seek professional help. I don't want to be a podcast that has to come with a warning label. Life experience counts as much as a degree in some cases. Now, if something exciting that I'm going to be doing February 7th. So if you're like, yeah, woohoo, you started on your New Year's resolution, they're decluttering and you kind of sputtered out which is okay because a lot of people do because we think, oh, we have all these resolutions and bite off more than we can chew. So beginning February 7th is a free 21 day declutter your life challenge. You get an email every day. I'm also gonna have a $25 version which gets you some Facebook support and some live coaching. And you can find out all that information at reawakenyourbrilliance.com but I purposefully wanted to have it after New Year's resolutions. 
When you don't know what's important and what matters most, that can lead to clutter, right? Physical clutter, if you're buying stuff you don't need, love or use. You burn mental clutter because you might not be putting the intention where it needs to go and you're wasting mental energy on what's not important and that can become a whole spiral and rabbit hole. Relationship. If you don't prioritize your marriage, your partnership, that's probably going to cause some problems down the road. Maybe not immediately, but it can create tension. Health clutter. The more I've read and lived life, I believe that our health is affected in numerous ways when we don't focus on what our passions are. It can cause depression. It can cause you to be unenthusiastic about life. Maybe it leads into not taking your care of yourself as well as you could. When you're engaged, when you're excited, when you are on fire, that just helps you. Finances, money clutter. Someone recently told me, I'm going to have them on, that when you aren't earning a lot, you just need a tweak in what you're doing because you might be doing something okay, but we've got to get you on that path. That really is what you're passionate about and excited about. I think that's a really interesting thing, and I'm looking forward to exploring that more. And you can create emotional clutter when you feel like you aren't doing what you'd really like to do, right? What I mentioned earlier, just kind of rinse and repeat of an uninspired life. That's no fun. That doesn't do any of us good because we're all in this together. And of course, spiritual clutter because you're wasting your time not sharing your gifts with the world. and now more than ever, we truly need your gifts. How to figure out what matters most. And don't be embarrassed if you can't answer this or aren't sure. I think there are more people than we may realize. Again, you know, with social media, I feel like we just put on these inauthentic masks, thinking everything's great. And this is a curated life when it's not how it truly is. So don't be ashamed or upset at yourself if you're like, wow, I really don't know. And, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. And just in my, I've been an entrepreneur since 2009 and things have changed. I was super excited about the organizing. Then I'm like, wow, that's really more about the decluttering and that's turned into coaching. And I want to do classes and books and all this and ooh, plant medicine. And it ties into all that. It definitely ties it all into that. So spend time contemplating. One of the good news from the year that shall be named, not named, is that I had been saying for a while, I really, you know, I don't, except for limited things, I really don't want to do physical organizing. And pandemic said, well, here you go. You've been saying it, Julie. Let's give you a little shove in the other direction. Because again, there are certain things I really want to do like end of life, or I love decluttering and organizing offices because that's related to business and that really gets me excited. I made a conscious decision to stop seeing people at the beginning of March. And why should that change? I just decided, you know what? I like being at home. I like writing most of the day. I love doing online coaching. What's important to me is supporting people and living their best lives and to go deeper. I'm always saying dig deeper and coaching allows me to do that. Writing books allows me to do that. So someone can read that in the comfort of their home. I'd been saying it and now I made it happen. And I mentioned your plants. I don't know how I'll incorporate that. I'm open. I have so much to learn. It feels like a right direction to go in now. And again, I don't know how that'll lay out, but I've been contemplating about that. So I'm going to encourage you contemplate. What excites you? I did last year, we did that on when you know better, you do better. That I believe was in the beginning of November. Check that out. So those are questions to maybe do a self-evaluation. So review that episode. Maybe that can support you as you're spending time contemplating. Write it down. When you see stuff, I believe the act of writing something down or saying it out loud, but writing it down, posting, I look over here at my whiteboard slash bulletin board, put it where you can see it. You write it down. It's another way of committing to it. 
And when you have to take those steps to get stuff done, write it down. If we don't write it down, it more than likely doesn't get done. So that again, just kind of reaffirming, like I would say, if you're gonna do affirmations, you write that down and you can bring that in, bring in an affirmation with what's most important to you. Those are gonna be those reminders to keep you on track. Schedule your time around what is most important. Many people mismatch this. They say to me, X is important, but then they spend time on Y. Examine your schedule. How much of your time is social media sucking away? On my iPad, it tells me how much time I spend every month. Now, because I also read on my iPad, I take that with a grain of salt, but I'm always saying, can I get that number down? When I see it on Sunday, has the number gone down? So just be really aware of how you're spending your time. If you want to write a book and you say, well, Julie, I've got a, a day job. Okay. You can write on your lunch hour. You can write on the evening, you know, or you can whittle away three hours on Facebook. It's a choice. So become aware of it and say, then I, block it out. Right. I'm going to write the next great American novel. I'm going to spend time on my pottery. I'm going to spend time learning more about my acting craft. Whatever it is, lock time on your schedule. Because again, if you don't write it down, it doesn't get done. Now, I know I've done a couple episodes on this. Don't look at this. Just briefly hold up my schedule or my where I write all my to-dos. But I use a legal pad. And so the left side, this is why I wanted to put it in the journal prompt so you can pick out what's important. But what I do for my to-do list, all my personal stuff is on the left column and on the right is the bigger, everything else, like the, all the little tasks that have to do it, but I write it down. So I get it done. I have to write down, research my plants. That's part of my certification so that I do it. So make sure you're scheduling time. Consider creating a vision statement. I did a podcast last year on that. Get really, really clear. Make that your daily mantra, make affirmations around it, whatever you're desiring to create. Once you figured out, you know what, this is what's most important to me. So do all these little things that support you. Does the thought of clearing your clutter overwhelm you? Clear your clutter inside and out has 21 standalone chapters to fit your schedule and lifestyle. Stop being afraid, gain clarity, and go at your own pace. The Clear Your Clutter Inside Not Workbook lets you record your thoughts step-by-step step as you go through the book. Free MP3 meditation with purchase. Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and also available for purchase on Amazon. Let go of the unimportant stuff. Easier, easier said than done. This is worth taking a moment to think about and reflect upon. Why are you wasting time on social media or with people who don't matter? You know, I, I mentioned, I go in a little more detail than one of the other episodes, but someone I'm like, who I've known all my life, but I'm like, you haven't posted on my Facebook page in years. And I've been, you know, I spend less time, but you come to complain and you can't celebrate when good things have happened or when heartache has happened. And I decided I was going to block him because he's just, you ultimately have to get to a point where you feel sorry for someone who, who's been walking around angry for years, but I don't need that. That's about having a boundary. I don't want to waste time on someone like that. So that was like, you know what, good reminder, you need to be on Facebook less. And I have to tell you, it made a huge difference being off Facebook for four or five weeks. I deleted that from my phone. It was awesome. And so that's when you have to add, like, that's who cares what he thinks. Let him be a rambling fool. And that's why I didn't block him. I'm like, I want everyone to see what you've written. Because I want you to see, you know what, if you write stuff, let everyone see it. I'll just leave it at that. Ask yourself, why are you wasting time on social media or with people who don't matter? If you get to the why, it will allow you to focus on what matters. 
Are you afraid of putting yourself out there? Disappointing others? Are you wanting to pursue a career that's unacceptable, right? A lot of times we give artists a hard time. Why are you wasting time? There's usually a why behind it. When you are frittering on stuff that doesn't matter, that again could be coming from fear. So dig a little deeper there if you can. Look at your calendar. Yeah, I decided this needed a second mention because I've had multiple people say to me, this is what's important. And then their time doesn't reflect that. So make time for what matters. Now, during this process, and you know, this doesn't have to be figured out in one day, but take the time for self-reflection. I think it's always important to see where you are and if you're still on the right path, because life happens, things may change. Life starts, life ends, things happen. Is it really what you're passionate about? Like for me saying, you know what? And the life's what I'm passionate about. Or with organizing, it's about the offices. That's what's important to me. That's what I still get excited about if I'm not getting excited about it anymore. And that's okay. And it doesn't make it wrong. But make sure that you are building in that time to see how you're feeling, if it still feels right for you, if it still feels good. And if it doesn't, then make a change. Figure out a way to keep motivated. Writing my book took years. I want to say the one that was more writing intensive. I want to say I was on it for four years. Something I was passionate about. I was fortunate to have an editing team, Cotty, my Uncle Jim, my mom. People who read early drafts are, are true saints. That helped me with that, but I had to do something. I could have given up multiple times. I could have never made it to the light. You know, one of the things, and she was so good, I had hired someone to do the cover and I loved all of her drafts. She said, I'm going to do a bunch of different concepts, but she just got me right away. She's like, can you send me a draft? So I print out, they're up here. I print out all the covers because seeing that kept motivating me. I'm like, oh, these covers are beautiful. I can't wait to hold this in my hand or see it on the screen. And that was a huge thing to keep me motivated. So figure out what is gonna keep you motivated. What is gonna keep you going? Maybe it's finding a support group. Maybe it is knowing that you are making a difference and it's taking all those client notes and things that people write you and putting those together. So when you're feeling down, oh, I am making a difference. I am making a difference. I'm going to keep going with that. So figure out what will keep you motivated when it gets challenging. Set goals. If we want to focus on what matters, I'm going to encourage you to set goals. What I do is I have, I'm doing a mastermind, which has been incredibly helpful. I started that. That was one good thing about last year. And just another woman and I, we have a check-in at the two-week mark. And at the end of the month, we have an hour-long meeting. And so that was good having an accountability partner. But what I do is I draft out each month what I want to accomplish. And I have a general idea for the year. Now, you have to be flexible as life changes. I just kept saying, oh, I'm going to go edit a couple chapters of my end of life book and didn't happen. And finally I took it off and she was like, you know, you just stop. Do not beat yourself up. There's a lot going on because for me, at least writing takes brain power. It's I can't write on autopilot. And so what I did is I did as much administrative stuff as possible. I'm like, I can do this and get stuff done. So when 2021 comes, then I'll have freed up a lot of time. So for instance, one of the things I did was I have all my blogs for 2021 posted. So we're going to be moving. We've got a lot going on. There will always be blogs posting for this entire year. So then I can feel like, okay, I'm getting something done. I have a resource, but that will free up time later when I need it. So for this year, any little thing I did opened up more space for me to write. 
So have goals. And I know that I've done podcasts on goal setting. So check those out. But again, remember, be gentle with yourself. You've got your goals. Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. If you aren't prioritizing something, then maybe you have to wonder, is this really important to me? And that's just kind of the process of life. You start out thinking something might be really important, then you discover, eh, you know what? It really isn't. But again, with that prioritizing, that brings us back. I'm like, oh, I'm contemplating, I'm scheduling. Am I, let me look at my to-do list. Is it focused on my priorities? You always want to be aware of this. Consider a support group. More help, the better. I mentioned my mastermind a moment ago that helps keep, keeps me focused, accountable, and check in with myself. One month when I just had a little meltdown and Wendy, my mastermind partner, is really great and just kind of let me be like, bleh. And she's like, look, you're going through a lot. Be nice to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. It's okay. Do the book for next year. There are still things that you can work on. And some of those times when you feel like you can't give yourself permission, it helps to have someone else and say, it's okay. It's okay to not get it done. It's all right. And you're still going to achieve what you want. And it's all right. So they, again, and especially if you are doing something like you want to write a book, maybe finding a writer's group, people are going to understand what you have to go through. Or if you are an actress, finding a support group with actors, right? So you understand that I wouldn't understand acting much, but people who do that will understand the struggles of auditioning and everything that you have to do. And that it's just, again, more support helps you. and. Find groups that are good. Find groups with people that really are truly supporting you, not ones that aren't, that are trying to sabotage or put you down. I think that's really important. I had a friend that was in a writer's group and, you know, that's awesome. You can get critiques, but they had one member that it, it was, it wasn't a critique. And again, it's all how you present yourself, but it was just awful. And they eventually had him leave because just the dynamic and the energy of the group, because this person was, was, critical in an unhealthy way. Be accountable. Have some way of keeping track of your progress. I mentioned the self-evaluation that I did at the beginning of November last year. Don't sleepwalk. Don't be on aut autopilot. You have to figure out a way, am I moving towards what I desire? I have people who hold my feet to the fire, like the mastermind is really good about that and people who support me emotionally. You know, when I just want to sob and my husband's like, it's okay, I'm here. I think that that's really important. So you might need multiple people that can help you be accountable. Because again, if you don't take goals, you don't set them to be able to focus on what's truly important to you, then, you know, you wake up and it's a new year. You turn around and five years have passed. Every single one of you listening has a gift. And if you haven't found it yet, that's okay. My great-grandfather was a janitor. He had a gift of being a janitor. Everyone is important. And I do this, and I know I say it a lot, but when you find your passion, you focused on what's important, you share your gifts with the world, and we so desperately need it. Really take a moment now, right now. I want you to think about it. What do you think our world would look like if everyone was excited about what they did? If when you went to the vet's office, they were like, Caracho cat, so excited to see you. This is awesome. And that's how they were with every single pet. You'd be like, dang, that's who I want my pets around. That's who I want to be around. Or when you went to the post office to buy stamps and send the package, you're like, hey, how are you? Wow, your package is so nice. Send in something to someone or just being joyful about it. You can find the joy. You can be passionate about everything. And if you have to do what I did and you do another job until you can get to what your passion is, that's okay. Focus what's on important. You know, if you have a regular job, you can always spend that time outside of it. Don't get discouraged. Keep going with it. Check in. 
This is really important with your self care, how you're feeling about things. You are getting all the little stuff that needs to be done, but are you taking care? Because focusing on what matters, you matter. Your health matters. Your sanity matters. That's all important. You know, I had was, I have a older female cousin. I don't, she and my dad are first cousins. So I, are we first cousins once removed or second cousin? I don't understand. I don't remember all that. Anyway, she's awesome. I didn't invite a lot of our extended family to our wedding, but we invited Grace and Jerry because they're just awesome. They're very cool. And I've, I've thought that since I was a little kid and Grace was like, I'm here if you need to talk. And that was so wonderful to me. I'm like, it would be really nice. Someone who understands my family dynamic and I'm stressed. I'm worried about my mom. And to have that, someone to be able to check in and for someone to say, hey, how are you doing? Do that with yourself. I encourage you to do it with others. Check in with each other. Are you all right? Are you okay? Because you need to be in the good space to be able to focus on what matters. Life happens. So don't beat yourself up. Sometimes we think we're going down A and then a curve comes and we're going down B. And that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. The more you are in the flow of life, the easier it becomes. And I truly believe that. Really struggled last year. Oh, I wanted to get this draft done. Well, it didn't happen, but that's okay. But other things happen, you know, you filed the lawsuit, which was a big deal and took a lot mentally and emotionally, and you stood up for yourself. That was important. And that's important to your overall well-being. That was probably more important and I probably spent as much time as I would on a solid draft. Don't be upset that the other thing didn't come and do timing. And really what I'm getting the feeling now is like, now you really need to work on healing yourself and working on these other books. So be gentle with yourself. And again, you know, it's kind of like if you have a rock in the river and the water just goes around it and eventually, you know, wears down the rock, but the more you're able to be in flow and not stop it, right? I've talked about that energetically. It's like sucking on the straw. And then when you try to control and get bent out of shape, it squeezes a straw and it sucks off the flow of life. And trust the process as much as you can. Priorities change. I, taking care of my mother last year was a priority. It was challenging to be up, you know, out of state for a third of the month, but it didn't matter because what it boiled down to is that was what was most important. Family always will come above everything else for me. And so I put my money where my mouth is. But just be gentle with yourself as the process happens. And finally, do you. Live life on your own terms. Define success as you see fit. If what matters most to you is tinkering with cars, then tinker with cars. I don't care what anyone else says. You have to do what satisfies you, what makes you happy. My hope, I think, as we start this year is less judgment, more love. And if you're spending time judging others, remember you're judging yourself. I was talking to a neighbor of mine and the neighbor across the street is currently the board president. And she just, I would, I said, I've got some feng shui mirrors on my house. Would you like some? Because they'll help reflect the energy. She came out as he was putting in his mailbox and she was like, is that measure up? Is that approved? Is when they first made the develop, you know, I think they all had the same mailboxes, but they built a couple of years ago. I would go nuts living across from this woman, but I'm like, what a sad life that you have, that you feel that you need to judge others and get into everyone's business. So I would also say that where you focus on you, do you, and don't worry about other people. And if you live across the street from a busybody that doesn't like your sculpture that you've created and put in the yard, oh, well, do you. As long as you're not harming anyone else, I think it's really important to honor who you are. Take actions from today's podcast. Contemplate your priorities. 
write what matters most to you down. Create a vision statement. Let the insignificant stuff go. Ask yourself why you're wasting time. Examine your calendar and how you're truly spending your time. Practice self-reflection regularly. Determine how to keep motivated. Set goals. Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. Find a support group. Hold yourself accountable. Check in regularly with how you're doing and feeling about what's most important. Accept life happens and don't beat yourself up if you get off the path. Do you always live your life doing what matters the most to you? Share your gifts with the world. On our next episode, we're talking about creating an emergency savings. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.